Um, we have a couple more questions here. So this is from uh, uh, Maria uh, Fluger. Um, yep. This is pronouncing as your last name. Um, which apple tree uh, cultivars are uh, are best uh, best disease and drought resistant? Um, very important to know for a sustainable home. Go with the Nova Scotia ones. If you're in Nova Scotia, Nova Mac, right. Nova Easy Grow, and Nova Spy. Start with those three. I mean, they're, they're locally well adapted uh, trees and they're disease resistant. So start with disease resistance by all means. And then there's a whole series, any of them that have PRI in them. So that could be Priscilla, that could be Primate, that could be uh, Primavera. Okay. You know, Enterprise, PRI. What's all of PR, those. What's that all about? It's the three universities that collaborated in developing a whole series of disease resistant uh, apple trees. So it was P is Purdue, R is Rutgers, and I was uh, Indiana, University of Indiana. So I these see. three schools had a, a co op program where they cooperated to develop these scab resistant, but not just scab, because right. some of it is. Um, cedar apple rust and so on so you're, you're basically um recommending modern um, ecosystem specific cultivars like the, the cultivars that have been developed for where you are that have been developed yes. to solve problems that exist where you, wherever you are um in, in general yes and the old the old time ones not all the old time because some heirloom ones actually are heirloom but they are quite uh they have some of them are quite a bit of disease susceptible, but there are some heirloom ones that are that are at least disease tolerant. Like you'll, even in a bad year, they won't get much scab. So look up how disease resistant that is to start with. It's unbelievable how different the results are because I started with a totally commercial cultivars. We had 11 cultivars and they were all disease uh, susceptible. They were commercial cultivars, your Jersey Mac, like Jer anything that has Mac in it, run. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't even pick it up. Like Jersey Mac made the best firewood after just a few years because they right. just died. You know, if you don't protect those things, they're going to die. Right. Uh, Macintosh, forget it, run. And so... Out of those, we had one, two that were not resistant, but that were the least, less tall, uh, more tolerant. So that was our uh, Spartan and Paula Red. Right. And those two, although they're, they're good and they still produce, and we have still some of those trees, they're now the most disease susceptible in the new orchard because the others are disease uh, resistant right so it's quite amazing to see the difference we went from the best trees we had to now they're the sort of looking like the worst trees i'm always amazed that it happens a lot here in nova scotia you'll be driving um down the road usually in a rural area and you'll see an apple tree growing in a ditch and it's full of apples and they actually look pretty good um yep. and there's no disease on them um <laughs> you know, and it, it could be just almost like a, a weird cross pollen like almost like a a random variety or or it could be from some farm that was there 200 years ago some weird variety you know well let me say we did quite a bit of prospecting before we put in the nursery and for the nursery and if you do see that if you're driving and you see a nice apple tree and you look and you go wow this is this year it's it's there's been a lot of rain and this tree has no scab on it and then if you try the fruit and you're in the right time and you go, wow, this is good fruit, please note it down and please look up how to graft and then please get some of that wood. Because yes. if that is a seedling tree, because in the ditch probably wasn't planted on the, in the ditch. It's like an apple someone threw in the ditch. That exactly. It's and all new variety, basically. It, it, it's a unique tree, but if it's that good, uh, I kicked myself because I once found one hiking. Somebody had probably thrown away a Granny Smith, and I found a, a Granny Smith lookalike growing in a sandy site. 
in August. So Granny Smith is a very long season and these were producing in August. And I thought, my God, this is, so I was hiking and we were camping. So I took a few branches we could have done bud grafting, but by the time I got home, it had gotten too warm. It had shriveled and it wasn't usable, but there are trees that sometimes are really worth noting and, and collecting because, Hey, nothing beats easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and if it's easy, it's easy. And people, a lot of people don't realize that in an apple tree, like if you have a Macintosh apple, that's one tree. There's like yep. one tree somewhere in Europe that tasted good. That was that. And every and Macintosh ever was from that one tree. Right. <laughs> They're all clones. There are mutations. Yes. So anyway, like Macintosh has several mutations now, uh, but it's like millions of that same tree. So if you find one that's really good, multiply. It's yes. not that hard, but it's well worth doing. You can't stick a fruit tree like you would stick a, a current cutting, you know, it's, it won't work very well but you can graft it right okay, next question.